Hey, CGS investors, it is Wednesday, June 14th in the evening, and uh, so far it's been a pretty good week, pretty exciting week in terms of our positions moving higher. Uh, we ended up hitting our, our final target on the QQQ at 15% yesterday, locking in those gains, uh, which has pushed our account to an all-time high. Uh, for our investing strategy. If we take a look here, uh, this is uh, 2021 and obviously the bear market, the light blue line here is the bear market in stocks and bonds. Uh, this is the buy and hold strategy on the bottom. CGS is on the top. And you can see this is where the, the power, the real value in CGS comes versus uh, holding and taking a big loss and being underwater with a, a diversified buy and hold style portfolio. Uh, we consistently are trading sideways or higher uh, because we don't hold things going down. And as you can see, the markets had a pretty good rally this year, a big rally this year, but they're not trading at all time highs. Even the NASDAQ has had a monster rally this year, but it is not trading at all time highs. So, um, you know, people are thinking, oh, they missed out on a huge move on the NASDAQ, uh, a big move in terms of the, the general trader seeing that move. Um, but again, not even... I mean, it's getting closer, but it's not even close to making all-time highs versus the strategy that we're implying here, uh, which is uh, called asset revesting, constantly is only holding assets going up in value. If nothing's going up in value that's safe, we sit in cash. And the fact that we hit another all-time high is pretty exciting when all the indexes are nowhere near their all-time highs, and some of them are actually uh, looking very, very bearish, especially the Russell 2000 uh, index. Uh, just... To, to go and touch on the long-term view here of the strategy since the last major uh, stock market top back in 2007, uh, the consistent growth strategy, I mean, it's the name pretty much stands for what it does. It's consistently moving up and to the right. When there's increased volatility, we can usually get some uh, increased uh, potential growth. Definitely COVID added a lot of extra uh, growth, some uh, increased trajectory to the upside. And uh, when you look at the this, the buy and hold strategy of st diversified stocks and bonds, it has been a wild ride and uh, they continue to suffer and underperform. And that's what always happens when you diversify. You spread your money out over a, a bunch of different assets. Some are going up really big. Other ones are going down, which really kill the benefit of the ones going up. So uh, that's kind of where we are. Really exciting that uh, we've got a lot of people really excited about the auto trading, watching their accounts, you know, go higher, uh, you know, month after month uh, in some cases here, and they don't even have to lift a finger. And um, that is the whole point of this strategy. We can all trade this and grow our accounts. And I really want to just make sure I set the proper expectations uh, with the strategy because I know a lot of people are moving towards CGS because it really is the the ultimate kind of way of investing where you get the, the most growth possible. Uh, over the last 10 years, the CGS strategy has uh, grown about almost three times more than the buy and hold strategy. And of course, it's had a very small loss. The max loss has been around 6%. Um, versus the stock market and the, the buy and hold strategy around 40%. So uh, definitely uh, a big benefit to trading this strategy, but it is slow and there's nothing wrong with slow. There's not a lot of trades, but it's all about just watching our accounts keep moving higher as volatility and uh, the markets chop around. That is the key here. So I just kind of want to go over the long-term picture here of the markets because as investors, it's important to not get carried away in the Fed news, in AI news, in, you know, the NASDAQ or AI stocks like NVIDIA rocketing higher, like the semiconductors. Um, it's easy to get caught up in the noise, noise and news. They're all really bad. They make you want to, they give you FOMO. They make you feel like you're missing out. And then you end up getting into positions usually near a market top or, you know, getting in near a market low, depending on which side of the, the, the trend the markets are on. But usually it gets you on the wrong side at the worst possible time. And right now we are in this kind of stage three topping phase. This stock market is rallying higher 
And this is what we see during uh, most major tops in the stock market. This happened in 2008, which I'll show you. It happened back in the tech bubble. The NASDAQ is, is doing what it has done both times in the past during just before we saw a stage four decline. And that was the tech bubble. And the other one was the 2008 financial crisis. And we're coming back to potentially another one of these massive financial resets that are very dangerous for anyone not paying attention. And investors with the buy and hold strategy with an advisor just kind of hoping things are going to work out are going to be in for one rude awakening. It's going to be an absolute bloodbath for advisors, the pain they go through of losing um, tens and hundreds of millions of dollars for their clients because they just sit there and let their their money decay during bear markets um, is, is a very painful time. Investors, it's even more painful giving your money to a professional and to watch your your money disappear when it's supposed to be protected. And that is the whole reason why I came about the uh, the strategies and do what I do, because I believe there's a much better way to invest in, invest in a way that protects our capital. And that's why you're here. You want to protect your capital and you want to grow it as fast as you can. And while this strategy may feel very slow in terms of the amount of trades we do, as you can see, hitting all-time highs again this week is pretty darn amazing, and uh, it's easy for it to fly under the radar and feel like not much is going on, but we're the richest we've ever been um, today or yesterday, closing out that position. The market's kept going higher. We still hold positions in the market with the SPY. We are still moving up. That is pretty exciting where most people are uh, really just trying to get back to their highs from a year ago. So... That is kind of the, the long-term picture there. Let's just uh, scroll down a little bit and go over the this kind of complacency phase. This is, again, we're in this, this move, this period, where people think the markets are kind of, I think a lot of people actually think the markets have already cooled off, and now they're starting to go higher, and they think that this new rally is um, is the start of a new bull market, which isn't so. The, you know, the average investor is uh, going to be, rudely awakened um, when when the price starts to sell off we start to break the lows from 2022 and then all hell breaks loose going forward um, you know they go through these waves of anxiety denial panic uh, I mean it is a terrible sl slide for a technical investor technical trader like us we don't go through this phase this phase we pretty much replace them with these optimism here is really our our complacency stage. We're getting really excited about a financial reset. It starts to break down. Instead of panicking and, and having anxiety, we're like, this is it. This is the real deal. We're going into a stage four. This is good. We can make money. As the market collapses and people can't believe how much money they're losing, decades of working, of life savings, just vaporizing, we're on a high going, this is unbelievable. I'm the richest I've ever been while the world is collapsing. And then, of course, people are panicking and we are more or less celebrating and tightening up our stops. So that is how it works when you're on a technical uh, technical trading side of the markets where we follow price uh, because price is the only thing that matters. And then we manage our positions, managing the positions other than following the price. Managing positions is the most important thing you have to protect, minimize your losses. When you take a loss, uh, it is you should be happy. It's a, it means you're following through with a strategy. It means you've got the willpower to bite the bullet, take the little loss, and wait for another setup. It's the people who are too weak mentally to to accept that they were wrong. The markets went against them, and they, they you know they don't want to get out. And uh, so next time you think about taking a loss or just getting our stops hit, eventually we're going to get our stops hit to when the trend changes or we're going to get a trend change signal. Don't think of getting stopped out or taking a loss as a bad thing. If you take a loss, um, give it it's not like a 90 percent loss. It's a loss when we're down like three, five percent. Uh, that is a pat on the back for following through. And this week, I mean, we, we hit our targets with uh, QQQ and the wave of emails of people asking um, if they should sell their position and when they should sell their position. Uh, the reality is, guys, if we're in a trade and we tell you 
Uh, here's our protective stop price. Here's our first target price. Here's our second target price. And of course, we update those as the markets and our positions unfold. You really should be taking that 10 minutes to log into your brokerage account, place those orders so that when you're away for the day or on holidays or just working uh, and the market hits one of those levels, your money is being managed. Either you're stopped out and you just protected your life savings or you hit a target, the money just got put into your bank account, you've just reduced your exposure to the market, you've pocketed profits, and it all happens more or less on autopilot. So if you're not using those orders, the broker has them there, uh, they're there to be used, and money management is by far the most important thing uh, that is going to save your butt, that's going to make you a lot of money. It's easy to be lazy. It's easy to say, oh, I'll watch it. I'll wait for a trade alert. But you shouldn't wait for us to say, hey, we just hit our 15% target because uh, sometimes they're delayed and, and sometimes the market can move very quickly, gap higher, give us a, a good fill and crash all morning. And by the time we get an alert out or update out, uh, the price, price might be down two or 3% and you missed out on tens of thousands of dollars in some cases, all because you didn't want to place a, uh, you know, a $2, $10 order with your broker. So I'm saying all this to help educate and, and get everybody on the right side, have the right expectations of what the markets can do, um, how we can navigate them and, and what you need to do in order to get the best results. Uh, again, we also have automated trading. So if you want this strategy traded for you, we don't manage your money. But if you open a brokerage account with one of the brokers that um, that executes our trades, they execute the trades for you. You don't have to do anything. You don't need to watch the videos. You don't need to follow the markets. Literally everything is done for you. So that is an option as well if you don't want to have to try and chase the markets down, figure out the orders. I know some brokers don't even have trailing stops. They don't have uh, allow you to put multiple orders. I learned, I think TD Meritrade or somebody said the other day, you're only allowed one type of order at a time with an open trade where, you know, other brokers um, allow you to layer in all kinds of orders and, and, and things like that. Uh, so uh, you got to be really careful uh, managing positions. It's the easiest thing. Human error is the biggest problem. As soon as a human gets involved with the stock market, their emotions take over. Laziness usually kicks in because they don't want to do the research. They don't want to follow the markets or they don't want to put their stops in and um, and uh, accept losses when they happen. And, and they don't even want to take profits. When we get there, that's the really crazy part. People are like, well, stock market's on fire. I don't want to get out. I'm going to hold it. And that backfires in a lot of cases. Our strategies are designed to try and get the maximum out of the market with the least amount of risk. We're never in at the bottom. We're never out at the top. But uh, we generate a consistent growth with waves of this right-hand side type of emotions of just being excited about trends. Right now we're in this topping phase, which really is tough and, and, and makes things a struggle, which if I was to just show you this longer term chart here of the SP500, this is the weekly chart on the top and the bottom chart here is the, uh, the SP500 daily chart. And what we've got going on here is we had a major buy signal after COVID, beautiful rally to the upside. Then we had a trend, major trend change. The market went out of favor into a stage three kind of topping phase, which is kind of what we're in right here. And we're back into a buy signal phase, but we're definitely, uh, you know, in this complacency mode. I don't really think we're going to have big legs here, but you got to be long. The trend is up. Technicals are there and we are, we have been long. But the key here is to realize when the market is in a raging bull bull market, we have these beautiful trends. The bottom chart is the CGS strategy that we trade. We have these beautiful trades. We can make a lot of money as the market's moving up. And, and when the market's falling, again, we, we pocketed 19% on TLT during the COVID crash. Our strategy got us out for a very small loss, moved us into the right asset. It skyrocketed. And then we got to rebuy back into the market at like an 18% discount and, and make a fortune. Um, so that is, that's what happens during major bull markets, big, beautiful trends. Once we're in this topping phase, we have a lot of this noise. 
little trades, you get in, make a tiny profit, get out, wait for the market, rinse and repeat. You end up getting a few little losses here and there. It's part of the game. And of course, this is a long time that we're going on a year and a half of this topping phase taking place. And it's all about protecting our capital, preserving our capital. So when the next major trend starts, which could be who knows, could be to the upside in a big way. We'll be part of that. If it's down, we'll also be able to take advantage of that going forward. So uh, it has been a very slow, it has still been profitable. Uh, it's been very profitable uh, going sideways here, but it has been a challenge. And um, we're waiting for that next big phase. The money is made in the stage two and stage four, This, which is uh, right here. Stage two bull markets, stage four bear, uh, bear markets or declines. That's where the real money is made. These topping stages are shaded red and the bottoming stages are shaded red because they're tough. Markets are choppy. Sectors are hot one month, terrible the next month. We've seen that in miners. They went from the top of the band, the best hot ass, asset hot list to the very bottom of the barrel and they're down big. Uh, so that is just the phase we're in right now. So let's go take a look over at the overall strategies. We've got the SP500 here. It has been moving up. We hit our first target at 3%, which is a fairly tight uh, target because we're still in this topping phase. We do need to try to uh, pull money out sooner, protect our capital because there's a much higher chance of the market rolling back over. Uh, but as volatility, as the markets change, our targets also adjust with the market. But right now we're seeing the market continue to hold up and rally higher and uh, money is definitely piling into the stock market here. If we take a look at the NASDAQ, we hit our first target, second target, third target, we are back out of the NASDAQ. And typically when the NASDAQ hits a 15% move in the past, we typically see a very strong pop or a very strong kind of topping phase. And it usually ends up reversing and correcting for several weeks. And then if it is gonna go higher after that, it'll generate a new trigger for us to get back involved. Right now, we have caught the the easy money in this trend. This is an, feels a lot like a uh, AI kind of bubble. We're seeing um, days where the stock market closes higher, but almost all sectors have closed lower. And that is not a good sign when a few stocks, just the one sector is holding the whole market up. So that is very important and um, it leading to some kind of interesting times going forward. Let's go take a look at the NASDAQ monthly chart. And I want to show you kind of a view here of what happened in the past. So uh, let, let's go right back to the tech bubble. And we had the stock market here. This is the monthly chart. The, the NASDAQ pulled back, big, big, sharp pullback, 47%. It then went up and rallied 63%, uh, forming this here is a topping phase, a stage three topping phase. Uh, and more or less the market came down, it tried to come up for kind of a double top, and then it rolled over and went into a stage four decline, losing a ton of money. The stock market fell from that level uh, roughly 82, 83%. Uh, even just from the, the lower high, it still fell almost 80%. So a uh, huge type of drop. And this is the complacency phase, that stage three topping phase that we're in right now with the stock market. So let's go back to 2008. Here's 2008. We saw the NASDAQ sell off 25%, which is pretty much what we saw last year with the in 2022, the pullback. And then it rallied 23% to the upside. Uh, and then it started to roll over and went into a stage four decline. And we ended up seeing the market correct a very big 54% uh, from the all time high from the previous high. It fell about 50% before putting in a bottom. And so if we go and we look at where we are today, we have got the first major pullback. The market is down 37%, the, the NASDAQ. It has rallied back up here, 43%. And 
And it's just a matter of time, I think, before it starts to put in some type of topping phase and starts to move lower. Now, the NASDAQ is doing very well. The, the tech is, is a heavyweight. It is moving up. We've got Apple, Tesla, NVIDIA, semiconductors really driving this market up. So it might muscle itself up even higher. It might come up for a double top. It might even pierce that before potentially getting hit with a big bout of selling. But when we go look at another index like the IWM, which is giving us a better broad market feeling, um, we can see here, uh, this is a very bearish pattern on this sector. This is trading sideways in more or less a big pause, a big bear flag pattern just before it's potentially going to sell off and go for another big swan dive. And the small caps are a very good barometer of what is going on uh, with the broad market uh, uh, health. Majority of stocks are not looking so good. It really is just masked by uh, several other types of positions. So with all that said, let's go look through a few other markets uh, and just jump through the charts so you can get a, a kind of a well-rounded feeling of other markets here. Let's go take a look over at the bond market, TLT. Actually, you know what? Let's just go take a quick look over at uh, today's price action with the um, uh, the Fed that came out. Here's the 30 minute chart. This is a very slow, very uh, good chart to give you a, a gauge of the market action. A lot of people were getting very worked up about the Fed news. Uh, all it created was an intraday drop. It filled a gap from a couple of days ago and then rebounded back up and ended up closing relatively flat on the day. Nothing very interesting. The 10 minute chart here shows you the Fed news, the drop, of course, whatever goes straight down on news usually is going to give back a good chunk of it, at least half of it. Uh, market recovered all the way back and ended up being flat on the session. So um, all the news is, and this is what people need to understand, is news and opinions are how you lose money in the markets. It gets you on the wrong side. It makes you double start second guessing your strategies, your positions. You start changing things. Um, it is dangerous. As soon as you start to get your, the news gets its teeth hooked into you, you're, you're pretty much screwed unless you've got a strategy to be able to step back. I haven't watched or followed the news in years. Usually my kids <laughs> who are uh, 11 and 13 usually fill me on, on breaking news because uh, I really don't like to be around negative stuff. I think uh, news is unpredictable. Politics is BS and everything else is just noise on top of that. So I just follow the charts and go about doing my regular life, having fun. But um, that is kind of where we are in terms of the news and how people got worked up for something that literally, this is a 10 minute chart. It was 10 minutes in, within 30, 40 minutes. It was right back to where it was. Uh, yet people like, you know, dictate or change their whole investment strategies based on a piece of news uh, in the market. Anyway, let's go take a look at the dollar index. Dollar index has been pulling down. I'm going to get rid of these short term charts here. Actually, let's just get rid of them completely. Dollar index is trying to carve out a bottom, I think. I do think we're going to see eventually uh, the dollar carve out a bottom. This is going to be a very significant level right across here. Not a very straight line, but you get the gist. There's a bunch of highs and lows through here. The dollar pulling back as the dollar pulls back. It should be helping gold a little bit, but I think the precious metal space uh, sees light at the end of the tunnel that uh, the dollar is eventually going to uh, work itself back up and break out and go for a pretty big run. And if that happens, it's going to put downward pressure on metals. That's why metals have been uh, definitely struggling and pulling back uh, quite a bit recently. And of course, if this happens, if we start to get a breakout in the dollar, that probably means the stock market is going into a nosedive into a stage four decline. Because when we see the stock market crash, people liquidate positions. They typically move their money to country currencies that they're comfortable with. And the U.S. dollar tends to do very, very well in rally. So that's kind of that point of view. So let's take a quick look at gold. It's down. Um, gold is holding up very well in the big picture, which I, I'll, I'll touch on that in a minute. But obviously gold is kind of floundering down. It's been heading lower a little bit here. Uh, the gold miners, let's take a look at GDXJ. Not a very good looking chart. Continues to, to have these red bars and moving lower. Uh, silver miners are doing the same thing. Definitely um, 
you know, they're kind of coming down into a support level. They're trying to find this level, but if it breaks, it's going to be a very sharp, another leg down in the miner space. Uh, silver down about half a percent today. And uh, it's had a pretty nice little rebound, but overall, I would still say this is a bearish pattern. We've got a sell-off, we've got a bear flag. If this starts to break these lows, it could really pick up speed and, um, and head uh, quite a bit lower very quickly here. In terms of, uh, let's go take a look at, at uh, crude oil. Crude oil is up a little bit today. It's been all over the place. Crude oil is uh, hanging on by a thread here. Um, let's just throw a line across here. Let's actually go to the monthly chart. The monthly chart will give us a pretty clear view of this uh, critical pivot point. If we just look at this, this level on the chart, it acted as a very clear level through here as support and resistance. Uh, was a kind of a, a resistance area through here. Very clear levels of resistance through here and here. Finally became support. And now it's acting as a support level again. But if this breaks, we're going to see a very quick drop in crude oil. And um, typically what happens, we've seen this in the past, is we see um, crude oil skyrocket in price and then sell off down to a support level, just like we saw here. It sold down. Uh, what we, that's exactly what we've seen here. Big move up in crude. It's sold down to this support level. And then this is right where the stage four decline in 2008 took place, the big bear market in stocks. And we're, we're flirting with that level again. Um, and, and gold miners uh, have been holding up really well. Let me just go back to the gold chart. If we go back to um, gold and look at that monthly chart that I, I, I mentioned here before, let me just grab the gold chart. Gold has got these major topping topping candles right here. Gold is flirting and holding up near the highs. And uh, if the market sells off, we're going to see another probably pretty big pullback in gold, which I think is a bullish thing. I want to get long more physical metal or own gold uh, down the road because I think the next move after this is uh, we're going to see gold move up you know, $1,000, potentially a couple thousand dollars per ounce, which is pretty exciting. Silver will move up substantially as well. But just look, gold is up near the highs. And if we go back to our market cycles here and take a look at the price action, you'll notice this blue cycle, this blue and green cycle is the stock market. Energy and precious metals are the last two to generally top out. Energy topped out last year. It's on the verge of breaking down. Precious metals are right up at their highs, or gold is at its highs. And we are like coming up for a double top or the start of a decline in, this, in the stock market in a way that most people aren't expecting. Now, you guys have, you guys have probably heard me talk about this a thousand times on interviews and in and, and our updates. But I mean, I like to recap this stuff and try to do in more detail. We always have new subscribers, uh, new investors with us. So um, again, you're, I'm preaching to the choir to most of you guys, you, you, you know all this stuff, but um, it's important to, to keep hearing it and keep seeing it. And some days hopefully I have a, a new little tidbit to throw in here um, as the market unfolds. But um, overall, uh, in the grand scheme of things, that's it for where we are in the stock market. Now, I did post an interesting article uh, yesterday uh, or today, uh, what's today's today? 14th. Uh, so yeah, posted one this morning on interesting market analysis. If you go to our blog, go to the articles page, I'm talking about a, a double double sell signal on the NASDAQ that's popping up. Again, we're not using this to trade. CGS is its own beast, but there's always some interesting analysis out here. Uh, before COVID, the put call ratio was an awesome tool. During COVID, where everyone piled in and just started buying call options thinking, Trading is easy and uh, they're all buying leverage and really they're playing with fun money. I think most people were. Uh, it got out of whack. It was useless, in my opinion, never touched it. Um, and then we finally got back in 2022, back into the normal range. Anybody who messed around with the markets here, uh, you know, ended up losing all their money that they had and then they're gone. And now we're back to normal markets. Well, we're on a signal here in the market that has generated uh, sell-off signals in the past. The average sell-off signal is about um, 18%. And we got another one happening right now. We're at a critical 
turning point in this uh, this market that could we could see a big pullback. It just happens to be that the Nasdaq we hit our last target and statistically showing usually after we hit that target the market usually puts a top in within a couple of weeks and then goes into a pretty big correction so what's interesting is these signals here are just based on really simple put and call ratio levels um, and some moving average crossovers just basic basic analysis uh, but you know right now people are not worried they're buying call options people are piling into ai they're piling into the arc etfs they're like top of the list People who trade and pile into the ARK ETF, ETFs are generally the more aggressive people, more emotional. They're, they're chasing the dollar. They're chasing money, and which is not the way to trade. Um, and, uh, and that's kind of one of those key points. Now, if we take a look at pre-COVID of the NASDAQ, I like to use more cycle and um, intermarket analysis for this. Each time we got one of these interesting signals, the market pulled back. On average, it was about 6%. And fast forwarding through this article to give you the, the lowdown, we've got bullish phase analysis pointing to the short term tops. And then we've got um, kind of um, kind of a bearish stage put call ratio style analysis pointing to a top. We have two different strategies, both saying, hey, this market looks primed and ready to pull back. And uh, the crazy part is the majority of people are starting to get comfortable and think they're they're doing well and that the markets are going higher. And that's not a good sign for for those people. Um, so that's kind of it in a nutshell. And, um, you know, I do a lot of other podcasts. If, if you don't watch them already, again, if you go to our research, go down to podcasts and interviews, I'm constantly doing these and uh, you kind of get, you know, updated analysis. And I usually get asked a lot of different questions and cover different things. So uh, definitely lots of great info in all of these different uh, podcasts and in interviews that I do. And last but not least, a shameless plug for my book. Uh, if you're using the CGS strategy, I mean, you obviously are, are already a believer in investing and trading differently. And my book, Asset Revesting, is a detailed breakdown of all the problems with the buy and hold investment model, uh, all the things that uh, asset revesting is and how it allows us to navigate these markets in a better way. And I truly believe the only way you can follow a strategy uh, long term and get the benefits of it and not, you know, veer from its path is if you fully believe in it, which means you need to understand it at a deeper level. So you have the trust in a strategy. Uh, most people just trust their advisors. I was offered an opportunity to work with an advisor and become registered and, and you know, offer a strategy. And, you know, they told me it's super easy. I just have to go write this one exam. They're like, you don't even need to study. It's so easy. You know, more than the exam. And you can go manage people's money. And that is unbelievably scary that most people, when I even when I speak to advisors, um, you know, only about 1% of them are technical analysts that follow are tactical in the market. Most of them literally are just buying and holding and spreading your money out. And uh, your life is depending on them just parking your money you know, in a mix of assets, there's all kinds of great assets out there for them to make things sound really good and to lure everyone into the, the buy and hold portfolio of stocks and bonds and diversifying across different things. But, you know, there's the all in one ETFs that already have the mixes. You just buy one ETF. There's hedged ETFs, which hedging is super expensive. You underperform on the upside. You still lose money on the downside. Um, there's covered calls strategies, dividend reinvesting, you name it. They all are terrible, terrible strategies for somebody um, with a lot of net wealth and, you know, close to retirement or already retired. Very dangerous, especially what we're potentially walking into with this market here. It will uh, reset your financial uh, level to a level that you don't want to go back to. Um, so anyways, my point is, you know, if you if you really want to get a grasp of this, I'd Really, you know, this book is a huge step up in terms of really kind of getting a better understanding of what we're doing, how we invest our our money through the assets. And um, of course, if you like the book, it'd be great if you could review it, review it on Amazon. And um, yeah, so that's that's about it for this week. I think I covered quite a bit. I rambled. It's a longer video than I thought. Uh, wow, 33 minutes. I guess uh, so I was enjoying that. But uh, anyways, let's talk again soon. And have a good night. Bye-bye.